Good morning, Kentucky, and I'm Grace McKenna. We're so glad you're starting your Saturday off with us. We are going to get to our continuing coverage of the UAW strike now impacting Louisville here in just a few minutes, but we do want to go ahead and get your weather first with meteorologist Reed Yaden, who's at the Bardstown Art Fair today. Reed, has it finally uh, chilled out there with the weather for you guys? It was a little crazy at six. Hey, it's, it, it is a beautiful fall morning if you slept through it. A cold front passed through Louisville, then it went through Bardstown about an hour later. Well, that was about the time we were going in the air. We got a brief shower or so. Anyway, it did not last long. The sun is out. We're in, we're in a dry, dry slot behind the cold front. So we're going to get several hours of sunshine here, and then we'll cloud up again. It's going to be chilly today, but it is nice, beautiful here. Along the street, the uh, Art and Craft Festival is in full bloom here in Bardstown. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. The rain has moved out of the viewing area. We're dry all across the viewing area. Today would be basically a dry day. We have a lot of things going on this weekend. As we've been talking, October is a very, very busy month. Look at all the events, and this is just part of them. The Mayor's Southwest Fun Run is a good run. If, if, if you want to get into running today, Harvest Homecoming, of course, goes on. We're here in Bardstown today and tomorrow. This event goes on. We'll call it 64. That was pretty much our high overnight. 66, I think, would be the technical high. Temperatures hanging in the mid to upper 50s now. Tomorrow's high will be 58. It'll be cloudy, a little breezy, and it'll be cloudy and breezy this afternoon, but basically dry. Now, let's take a look up above. Here is our Sky 11 drone looking down on this great event. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Cars, booths everywhere. They lie in the streets. And more and more people are pouring in. For a lot of folks, this trek to Bardstown is an annual event. Now, I saw on YouTube the other day a piece that Claudia Coffey did for Great Day Live on a great restaurant here in Bardstown called Mammy's. Well, I want to say good morning to a lot of people sitting there at Mammy's having breakfast now. John and I went over and had a wonderful breakfast, unbelievable, and our waitress was Renee. Renee, thank you. If you go into Mammy's today, see Renee. Try the hot brown. It is to die for. We'll see you again about 916 from Bardstown. Reed, thank you so much. We do want to get back to our top story now. Starting Monday, Ford will be laying off hundreds of employees across six facilities in Ohio, Michigan, and Illinois. The automaker says the strike at the Kentucky truck plant is partly to blame. The strikes at KTP and the Chicago assembly plant have already impacted operations, and as a result, Ford said about 550 employees will be laid off. WHAS 11's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Aspen Hester talked with the local union president who says more layoffs could be coming and headed to Louisville. Dozens of Ford Kentucky truck plant workers have been picketing nonstop for three days, and now the concern is for Louisville assembly plant workers. I'm hearing that they have a two day supply just from what we stamp from them over here on the stamping plant that we send to their plant. LAP depends on KTP to provide parts for their work, and with low inventory, layoffs could happen soon. And if we're not running, uh, then LAP cannot run uh, because the stuff that's in our stamping plant keeps that particular part of that operation going. With us being down, they're going to be down. Local 862 President Tom Dunn says he doesn't see LAP lasting too much longer with KTP on strike. That's why he wants Ford to get back to the negotiating table as soon as possible. What I see is a uh, staggering down uh, method next week. I don't see them going any further than uh, the middle or end of next week. Dunn says the longer KTP is on strike, the more money is taken away from their strike fund because they didn't want to take a chance and leave their employees with no resources. If Ford Motor Company were to turn off the benefits, anybody that's not being paid a strike benefit uh, will not receive uh, insurance. It's day three of the strike at KTP and workers are going strong on the picket lines fighting for better pay and benefits. The support on the picket lines has been overwhelming. Some workers brought their children like Craig Krieger. It's sad. Like, he's been working, what, 25 years, you said? And now he's got to go through this. Corvette workers from as far as Bowling Green have also stopped by to stand in solidarity. I came down here because they supported us during our strike four years ago, and we're all in this together. 
hoping this strike will move forward to negotiate with a better contract soon. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. And the workers on strike started signing up for strike pay at the Expo Center Friday. They'll receive $500 every week that they're on strike. Despite concerns, workers we spoke with are still optimistic a deal can be reached. The longer that it goes on, the more that both sides will be hurt. I would hope that within two weeks that we would be done. Everybody that's out here feels the same way that it is worth the sacrifices that we're making for what will be the end result. And if you are a KTB worker on strike and haven't signed up for strike pay yet, you can today and tomorrow at the Kentucky Expo Center from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. In some other news now this morning, a man is recovering after a shooting at a Shively McDonald's. Shively police say officers responded to the McDonald's on Dixie Highway near Miller's Lane just before 6 last night. Officers were originally called about an altercation, but when they got to the scene, they learned there'd been a shooting. One man was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound. He is expected to survive. Police say everyone involved has been accounted for and no criminal charges are expected at this time. Right now, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and LMPD are working together to catch copper wire thieves. Officials say these thieves are breaking into lighting systems and junction boxes to steal the wires, which they sell as scrap metal. Most of the thefts are happening along the interstates. KYTC and LMPD say the crimes have caused $750,000 in damages to systems paid for with your tax dollars. It creates a public safety issue not only for our uh, motorists, but also for uh, passerbys, pedestrians that could possibly be interested in what's going on, that could get into what's considered live electric. In a video on social media, LMPD shared these photos of the suspects. If you have any information, you are asked to call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. You can also use the online portal. We want to let you know as well, there is a $5,000 reward for information. Happening right now, JCBS is hosting its annual Showcase of Schools at the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center. First time uh, in West Louisville for that event. Folks from all 165 schools will be answering questions and discussing the programs they offer as families decide the best choice for their students. The showcase runs from 9 a.m., so just getting underway, goes until 4 p.m. Make sure you stop by.